Thursday morning and you know DJ Ubete's salary has come through. <laughs> Wherever you are in the country, thank you so much for choosing Joy 99.7 FM in the Volta region. You can catch us on Jubilee Radio in Keta, Volta Premier in Ho, and Minuvaba FM in Aflao, uh, Sun City Radio also in Keta. In Hohoi, you'll catch us on Lolonyo FM. Uh, Kekeli FM is in Ho, Far Far Radio is in Georgia. Radio Pando is in Pando. You could have guessed that one. Clenham Radio is in Bato. And in Aflao, you'll catch us on Victory FM. Shine FM is in Akachi. And of course, back to Ho for Swiss FM. In the northern region, Tamale is piping us on Bishara Radio, Radio Justice, and Might FM. And you can catch us on Jata FM in Karaga. Kitawon FM in Saboba. And Bewa Radio in Wale Wale. And in the Savannah region, in Kigli FM, in Bole, Magic FM, Bwipe FM, in the Eastern region, KTU Radio, in Kofu Radio, in the Upper East region, A1 Radio, in Bogatanga, Radio Fumbisi, at Fumbisi, Dreams FM, also at Bogatanga, in the Bono East region, Gaske FM, in Techiman, Sky FM, is in the Bono region, is at Sunyani, and in the Central region, ATL FM, in Cape Coast. All right, now listen, in the Upper West region, uh, it's Radio Freed in Nandong, Radio Wa and Radio Sungmali in Wa. Uh, Bolu FM is in Bolu, Laura FM is in, yep, you guessed it, Laura. And in Jirapa, you can catch us on Ganga FM. In the Western region, it's all about Radio Max in Takrade. Thank you so much for choosing us. We choose you every single day of the week. All right, today's conversation is about solving a problem that <laughs> no government seems to have found the solution to in this fourth republic, in, in, in fact, since independence, right, uh, of turning this country from an import dependent one into a producing and manufacturing one. They've all said they'll do it. They've all failed so far. But what are the real reasons why they failed? What are the real problems that prevent Ghanaians from producing the things that we are buying from other countries, buying in large quantities from other countries at, at poorer quality? And there are so many examples. We started with rice a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the rice industry and why it's not growing as we expect it to in Ghana. But well, today we're turning our eye to another big import, poultry. Why? Why is it cheaper for someone to produce poultry, chicken, in, in, in the U.S., freeze it for four years, ship it to Ghana, pay import duty, and sell it to a Ghanaian cheaper? than the same akuko produced in Ghana by a Ghanaian. The, economic, the economics don't seem to make sense. Today we'll make it make sense and figure out how to grow our local economy. Stay with us for that in just a moment. First, though, given the current economic conditions, it is critical that you protect yourself uh, from the financial consequences of unforeseen events. Join over 8 million customers who are living life the AU way. Subscribe to AU Recharge with care annual cover now and receive 6,000 Ghana cities of life insurance cover for yourself and a family member to support funeral expenses. Uh, 120 Ghana cities daily hospital cash benefit to support hospital admission fees uh, and a 10% no claim cash back. Make life simple by dialing star 928 star 101 hash to sign up to AU Recharge with care annual cover now to learn more why don't you call or whatsapp 059-691-8235 or just go to their facebook or instagram pages they are at ayo ghana ayo because you care well, if you are insuring your vehicle for the first time or renewing your vehicle, insurance or DV, then come to Priority Insurance and you stand the chance of receiving uh, fuel coupons, Priority branded T-shirts, branded TCUs, branded key holders and many more. Visit any of our branches nationwide and all DVL agency offices near you. Call the following numbers for assistance 0553-019-060 or 0268-760264. Priority insurance, we are on your side. All right, then. So, listen, let's get into this conversation, right? Why? Why is it that, uh, first of all, uh, we are unable to produce enough chicken to meet our local demand? And why is the locally produced chicken more expensive than the foreign frozen one? All right, let me tell you who we have got on board for this conversation. 
Here in the studio, uh, we have two guests. Kojo Akoto Boateng is an agribusiness practitioner. You remember him. He was, uh, well, <laughs> everybody knows Kojo. Uh, but the last time you heard him on this show, uh, we were talking about rice. Turns out Kojo is uh, heavily into poultry as well. Got it. Uh, an insight or two. We're also very pleased to have Gideon Abwaji with us. Now, Gideon is the COO of Dragon Group of Companies. Uh, he's another agri-business expert, and uh, he's got some great insights into poultry production. Kojo and Gideon, uh, good morning, and thank you both for your time this morning. Good morning, Kojo. Good morning, Kojo. Thank you for having us. How are you? Not bad, not bad. It's great to see you. You're looking good. Looks like you've been eating a lot of Ghana rice. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I've been, been eating FVV rice. FVV rice has been. Uh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> we have three Kojus on the show. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Wow. Well, Winston, do you feel left out? Me? No. Uh, in Ghana, the only day that we remember is Friday. Eh? <laughs> Pardon? The only day uh -huh. that we remember in Ghana and uh -huh. celebrate, uh -huh. Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Uh, but on this panel, the, oh, uh, still, on still, still coffee, coffee nama. <laughs> You're the minority. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Uh, joining us on the phone, uh, Victor Opong Ajay is the chairman of the Ghana National Association of Poultry Farmers. Uh, so we've got a big uh, representative voice there. Uh, we also have Emmanuel Commodore Mensa. Now, uh, Mr. Commodore Mensa worked at Pomadze Poultry Enterprise Limited. He's the one-time Deputy Secretary of the Agriculture, uh, sorry, Deputy Secretary for Agriculture in charge of livestock. Uh, Mr. Commodore Mensa, Mr. Opon uh, good morning to you both. Well, they'll be joining us uh, later on. Right, okay. We'll get them both on the line uh, as soon as we can. Uh, but we'll start in the in the studio, right? Um, and this, as for this topic, I mean, look, it beggars belief when you look at the difference in price of locally produced chicken compared to the foreign one. It just doesn't make sense. If you bear in mind the process that that foreign piece of chicken goes through before it gets to our plate compared to what a local producer would have to do to give us the same product. We are reminded by the Agric Minister that even after going through that whole process, the one we are paying less for is actually poorer quality. Let's, let's listen to this. Actually, we'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring you that sound uh, a bit later. Uh, sound of the Agri Minister. Do we have it? Do we have it ready? Let's go. I really pity those who eat imported uh, poultry. Because these days, some of them are from, uh, from the mortuary. <laughs> they are from the uh, animal mortuary. You know, they've been uh, put away for about eight years and pumped with all kinds of chemicals and, and, and water. And, and they have loaded on us because our systems are weak and we cannot check. We just harm ourselves for nothing. <laughs> Imagine that. Yes, I mean, it says we harm ourselves for nothing. Mm. But you see, if you look at uh, even statistics from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, for instance, it will tell you that the national demand for poultry is at 400,000 metric tons, mm. with local production of 57,871 metric tons. And we import 180,000 metric tons with a shortfall of 162,000 metric tons. So we have a demand of what? 400,000. Out of that 400,000, we are unable to meet the demand locally. Mm -hmm. So we decided to import. Even with all the import of 180,000 metric tons, because we are producing 57,000 metric tons locally, mm. we still have a deficit of 162 metric tons that are not even being met in the midst of all the imports. Mm. Hmm. All right. Okay. So listen. Let's 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 find out why. And we'll start in the studio. Could you, in in simple terms, what is it? What is it that makes local chicken more expensive? Than there are two kujos. <laughs> okay. Oh. For for the purpose of this conversation, it's Gideon and Kujo. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, you, you, you said something earlier, which I, I want to start with before we get into the poetry. You asked why we cannot feed ourselves. I'm not a historian, I'm not an economist, but we always say the Gadgetsberg economy, right? Mm. The economy that wanted to produce raw material to feed the rest of the world, the British Empire. I think largely that's how Ghana is structured. 
So if you look at our agribusiness space, right, what are we doing? We are growing cocoa. Who offtakes the cocoa? Oh. The cocoa is going to feed other people in Europe, China, and the Americas. Give them the beverages they need to keep warm in winter mm -hmm. and the other seasons, right? How much do we spend on cocoa? We spend billions every year. We go a borrowing to support the sector, yep. to feed an industry which ends up getting more value. So we commit close to 10% of the total land size of Ghana to cocoa. We earn $2 billion from cocoa. Someone else is earning over $100 billion of the back of the use of our 10% land, our water, our labor and everything. So we need to change the structure of that, right? So that's, that's an example. Yeah. Oil palm, it's been the same. We produce and then we used to export. It's just recently that we import crude oil palm to process into oil, mm. right? Timber, we're producing a lot of timber and not producing finished products. We just cut the lumber and prepare and export to other countries to produce a finished product, which is more valuable and then we go borrow money to bring this finished product into the country. So, for example, we borrowed money to bring furniture from China to, to, f to fix our parliament house. Okay, so we are always working for other economies. That's yeah. how I see it largely. Now, why are we not able to produce enough meat or poultry to feed us? Winston gave us the statistics. On average, we need to eat about 400,000 metric tons a year. We produce just about 60,000. 57,000. We import close to $250 million worth of poultry every year. Now, you add our poultry imports, sugar imports, rice imports, right? And a few other things, wheat imports. You put all these together, and it's almost as much as we earn from cocoa. So, I'm bringing your mind to why we are not sustainable as a country. Mm. So, what must we do? We need to re reorganize the resources we have locally to produce the things we need if you are not self-sufficient you cannot think of making other people sufficient so ghana needs to reorient ourselves we need to meet our needs if you net off a lot of the things we claim we get from foreign exchange because of the exports or the things we import you realize that we are losing but we are committing a lot of our resources to get very little gold we export all the gold raw. We don't do any proper, we don't have any proper jewelry industry. So an ounce of gold leaves our shores, let's say, hypothetical figure of $1,000. The finished product that is coming is worth like $20,000 and we have to find money to get it. Mm. So this is the general reason why I think we are where we are. Now, if you look at the poultry industry, you need a few things. And I'm sure Commodore and the others will also give us more insight you need housing for poultry so land housing for the poultry you need your input so you need your day old chicks you need your feed you need your medication and a few other things to let you run once you are done producing you need your packaging so if it's if it's eggs you need your crates to 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 package these eggs to sell these days we have the paper plates and the plastic plates Right. And then if it's meat, you need a slaughterhouse to slaughter the meat into the various parts. You package and because it's poultry and it's perishable, you need to freeze. So you need electricity and the and the and the storage. So these are the main things you need in the system. Now when you look at the poultry industry, the main cost center if you are running poultry is feed. Feed takes about seventy percent of your total cost. So if you are spending a thousand cities a month running your poultry farm, 700 cities is going into feed. Now what do poultry eat? If you look at the various feed compositions, maize, right? Then there is wheat bran, there is soya meal, there is the calcium component that they need to have, and then some other micronutrients. Now, of all these things I've mentioned, the micronutrients we might import, and it's in the minority, right? We, we don't grow wheat here. So when the flour mills bring in their wheat and they process, 
bran is one of the waste materials of wheat so we buy that so when the global prices of wheat goes up your wheat bran also goes up and then but we produce maize here mm -hmm. this year a greek minister said we targeted four million metric tons of maize i'm not sure we that was last year we didn't hit that and that four million metric tons was supposed to feed us so that we can eat kinky banku um cocoa and all that feed livestock as well and also feed industry those who use maize to make all these cereals we couldn't hit that so the poultry industry needs maize and for maize we can produce it here we have the expertise to produce maize mm. the industry needs the soya meal so the maize gives them the carbohydrates and the bulk food the soya meal contributes the protein right and then the calcium uh, as for example those who are running layers they need a the calcium so that the eggshells will form mm -hmm. okay you get it from other sources if you look within ghana a lot of these things are, are present for example we produce maize sisala is sisala west districts they are they are amongst the faint Tahiru's hometown yeah. if you need proper maize you go there you get it every other district also produces maize anyway soya if you produce enough soya then vesta oil mills ghana nuts and avnash and all these companies will get the soya to process into cooking oil mm -hmm. what we eat for our mamu and our stews and our jollof mm -hmm. now the waste product from that is the soya meal which is used to formulate poultry feed and then you get the other things mm -hmm. now wheat bran because we don't produce wheat we can substitute that with rice bran we can substitute some of these things also with millets and there is local research by sari and csir which which shows us that these are possible so what do we need to do to produce enough poultry we need to assure poultry farmers consistent supply of 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 of, of feed at a consistent price mm. last year i sold a bag of maize around january for 105 ghana cities in accra so maize from Tumu all the way to Accra, 105 Ghana cities for a bag. This year, it's going for about 240, 245. So within a period of a year, the maize price has more than doubled. 150%. Yes. So, and, 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 and have you checked egg prices and meat prices? Crazy. They've not doubled anyway. Mm. They are almost doubling, but they are not moving as, as yeah. fast as the feed uh, costs are going. So mm. these are some of the things. If we fix the feed problem, poultry farmers will be happy. A lot of them are shutting down because they cannot feed their birds. And this is what happens. When you don't feed the birds right for layers, they will not lay, give you the right um, output when it comes to laying, the, the right laying rate. Mm. If you don't feed your broilers right, you also not get them to grow as fast as or, 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 or grow to, to the size you want before you can sell. Mm. So in the end, you are putting money in a sinking, uh, in, in, in a black hole. The money just disappears. So these are some of the things. We fix the feed problem. Trust me, we'll be able to fix a lot of the issues around the poultry industry. That's great. So you've started to paint the picture now. Um, Gideon, I want to bring you in and extend the conversation. So I'm thinking as I listen to Kojo, okay, these are the inputs that go into producing chicken locally. Feed is the big one. But if I go to a poultry farm in the United States, I'm sure they also feed their chickens there. So what is it that makes the cost of production in Ghana so prohibitive compared to the cost of production in the countries we are importing from? Okay, so first I would say the first thing that is making it a bit expensive is that Almost the entire input that is required to produce water in the country is imported. Another thing. It's imported. From the DOC, which is the duo chicks, so it goes to the farm, the feed, everything. We import DO chicks. Yes. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. From from where? Oh, from the same countries we import the finished products. Most I mean, a lot of it comes from Netherlands. Yeah. Belgium, yes. yeah, Netherlands. Belgium, Netherlands, and Netherlands yeah. So yeah. The, the, the industry yeah. calls it Hollander Coco. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's, actually, it's actually somebody's company, Hollander Coco. Wait, do we bring the eggs in and hatch them here? No. no. We, they, no. They, they, they travel one day. 
to yes, Ghana. Yes, Could they've arranged with the, the cargo handlers in those various countries. Mm -hmm. And the planes that are fly, flying to Ghana, they just put them on it. And in the evenings, it's here. It and arrives and then guys you, you should go to the airport one of these days in, in the, the evenings. evenings. You see a lot of these day olds coming in. And, and the market is, is importing day old chicks because largely a lot of the poultry farmers are not confident in the local locally produced day old chicks um the poultry farmers believe they are not as resilient as the day old chicks we import but if you look at it critically um around november ish or let's say october september ish a day old chick was 15 cities yeah. today you get one for 24 cities <laughs> oh last week so, i checked it was uh, 21. yes so, so gideon yes so like hmm. i'm saying Almost everything is imported. Um, so we are able to, what I call, Ghananize it, as a, <laughs> a President uh, Busia used, that we should try and localize some of these activities. We will have a big problem with being competitive with maybe a farmer in the United States or in Europe. The second thing has to do with the volumes, the population, in terms of how much is produced per farmer in america you can have a caretaker who is taking care of one pen which has about thirty thousand beds population one person hmm. because the entire system is automated hmm. he doesn't need to go around looking for feed That's or it's arranged it comes into a silo they pump it into it the whole feeding system is automated he gets everything done so even cost of, um, um, let's say, the labor cost in terms of producing the broiler is reduced, barely reduced. Then when you go to the, after they've harvested the, the matured ones and taken it to slaughterhouses to be slaughtered, they, they segment the meat into various categories. So the breasted meat, which is of a high value, can fetch the farmer in America so much to cover for all his production cost. Mm. So then the tie, the leg, the wings, all the back, bonus. everything, he can sell it at any price and make some margin. So this is this is this is some of the things that we have to look at. But the first thing I will I will wish that we really look at is the feed. Mm -hmm. All right, because 60 65 70 percent of almost the entire cost of uh, poultry production is from the feed and the major component is maize and so if we want to address this issue we may have to produce enough maize not imported maize enough maize in ca this country because we have arable lands that we can produce maize with and we should focus on doing that when we become self-sufficient in, in, in maize production for human consumption and also to feed our animals, then we are making a headway. Mm. Till we do that, we will still have these challenges. So these numbers are quite interesting. I mean, you, you've given an example of one caretaker in, say, an American yeah. poultry farm uh, producing 6,000. 30,000. Sorry, 30,000 birds. Yes. That would be 6,000 metric tons yeah. of chicken, Yeah. right? And it, 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 I mean, I'm just doing the maths in my head. We have a, a shortfall of how many thousand? <laughs> 162,000. And one person can produce six. In fact, there's a company in Australia, right? Mm. Their production, one company, is more than the whole country's production. One company owned by one entity. They produce enough poultry more than the whole Ghana produces. <laughs> there is a case, maybe as we go along, mm. to look at automation yeah and yeah. integration we'll, we'll get to that if, um, mod modernizing our yes, methods if, if you look at ghana and where we are there's also a case to structure our industry such that they employ as many people as possible hmm. and if you do the scenarios there are scenarios where we can have labor intensive poultry farming and still produce the bulk we need to feed ourselves and also keep people employed We'll get to that. Uh, I want to bring in Victor Opongeje. Uh, Mr. Opongeje is the chairman of the Ghana National Association of Poultry Farmers. Uh, Mr. Opongeje, thank you for your time. Good morning. Good morning. So, hmm, uh, it, this is something that confuses me a little. Me, when they taught me economics, I kind of I believed them. 
when they told me of the all, how how the the laws work the, the laws of demand and supply so if there is a clear opportunity there first of all there is a clear demand for feed by your members why is nobody stepping up to to produce it locally and supply you what are the difficulties that prevent someone from taking advantage of the huge demand that your members have for feed so that we can produce it locally and bring prices down thank you very much let me say that in the first place poultry farmers cannot go in to produce the maize for uh, their feed so definitely it needs other people to produce and poultry farmers will buy from them. Yeah. The challenge we are having is, as my, my, my colleague over there said, our main challenge of the industry has been the feed. Uh, because if you are producing a broiler, you need about 60% maize and about 20% soya bean. Then you add the other ingredients. In that case, maize and soya beans uh, the ultimate input that we would need for the production. Mm. But here's the case that uh, maize has been very difficult even to come by. We were very glad when the government came in with this planting for food in jobs. That time, maize was 50 cities per 50 kilo weight, and it came to 65 cities per 50 kilo, which was okay for us. Now, we all thought the planting for food and jobs is coming to increase the yield of the maize so that poultry farmers will get it at a reasonable price. If not reduced, it has been stabilized. But here's the case that uh, uh, from 65 cities now, the same 50 kilo weight, we are buying it at 250 Ghana cities. Mm. And even that, it's very difficult for the poultry farmers to get the maize. So, if you look at the difference between 2020 and now, maize alone has increased over 500%, which is very huge. When it comes to soya beans, soya beans was about 150 cities. And now it's over 500 Ghana cities. Then let's look at Hebron. Hebron was 15 cities, and now the retail price is about 100 cities. If you look at these ingredients or inputs, you see that our feed cost has increased tremendously. And we cannot increase our end product, which is the egg or the, uh, or the chicken, to that margin. Mm. In that case, poultry farmers have been piling up deaths and deaths and deaths. And as we speak now, over 80% of the farmers are not in operation. So it tells you that virtually the industry is collapsing gradually. Hmm. Those who are in, in operation now, their, their stock has decreased. We have a farmer in uh, Domain in Kro, who was having a capacity of 300,000. But now, he cannot boast of even 50,000 beds. And there's another one with 150,000 capacity, but now he has only 20,000. If you look around, all the big farmers, I, I don't want to mention names, if you come to Ashanti region, mm. those with names previously, they have all collapsed. All because We've not given attention to the poultry industry. So, m m Mr. Okay. M yeah, m Mr. Pointe, I, I wonder. You know, so many calls have been made for the ban of uh, imports of, of, of poultry and poultry products. W would that? I mean, from what you've described, w would that even help at all? That is not the solution. What we have to do is to look into our field. My brother said we have arable land. Yes. What are we doing with the land? Uh, the land? We have land all over. If you look at uh, Africa Development Bank came out with a research that 
uh, Africa, we have 65% of the arable land. So we should have fed the other continents. But look at what is happening now. The lands are lying there. When the planning for food and jobs started, we made a suggestion that why don't we commercialize the maize and the soya? If you have only 20 commercial farmers, we equip them. They can produce more than enough. But if you want to depend on the, the smallholder farmers, what even they cannot do one acre and, uh, uh, within a period. Some are doing five acres. But the demand for maize and soya is so much that we cannot depend on the, on the uh, smallholder farmers. So if we are able to produce enough, then the price will come down. Look at our yield. Ghana, our yield is about two metric tons per hectare. Somebody is having a minimum of six metric tons per hectare. So why don't we uh, bring technology to increase our maize and soya production so that we will have enough for the industry, human consumption, we will have enough for them. Then other if even uh, other countries who are coming in, we can get some for them. But we cannot sit down while the lands are there, but we still want to depend on the smallholder farmers. We are not getting enough of the maize. Okay. And what we produce here, the neighboring countries, talking of uh, Niger, Burkina Faso, Benin, Togo, and even Nigeria, they took in to buy the maize at the early season. So... As you speak now, you cannot even get maize to produce uh, to feed your best. Mm. So no. the challenge is not about the ban of the importation. It's one of them. But we should look at our feed first. If uh, we are able to produce enough maize and soya at a reasonable price, definitely you will get closer to the important, the damp important uh, chicken. If we get to that stage. Ghanaians will decide because our chicken is one, it's fresh, it's tasty, and it's healthy. There's no doubt about that. But the okay. price difference is so much so that everybody will tell you, oh, Ghana, your chicken is too expensive, so we cannot buy it. So no. we have to work on the fee. Okay. How to get it at a reasonable price. The price will come down. We Mr. can Mwenji. do this when we mobilize. Uh, all the uh, commercial farmers in the country, then we equip them. We give them money. We need to invest in it. Okay. Initially, the investment will be, will be, will be big. But in the, in the long run, you see that we will benefit more. When so, Mr. Apoenje, talking about investment, and you've talked about you know, the farmers selling and everything. Now, what's preventing, for instance, the Ghana National Association of Poultry Farmers? or even some of the large poultry farmers deciding that instead of relying on these commercial farmers, we are going to produce our own maize and things that will be used in the feed production. How about funding them to produce so that you can buy at a cheaper rate? You mean, you mean the poultry farmers should fund them? You can fund the farmers, can't you? No, that is not possible. Even some farmers tried it. I remember Daku Farms uh, have a big land at uh, a gra with silos and everything. But because of the divided attention, he, he, he couldn't get the maize that he wanted, so he has to stop. This is not a matter of uh, the poultry farmer funding them. It's a project that the government should take it. Okay? Like the planning for food and jobs. It was quite okay. But the implementation was not good for us. You can imagine, every project comes to improve the existing one. So we were expecting the price even to stabilize. But now, over 500% increase. So we need to apply the division of labor. We okay. cannot go to fund the mills farmers to produce for us. All those who tried it, Agriculture tried it, he gave money to some farmers at the north. You couldn't get the mail that you, you wanted. So everybody should be in his, in, in, in his lane. 
male farmers should produce for us. But they also need help. And more so, we need to commercialize the maize farming. We have the lands there. If we, 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 we get more than enough of the maize, yes, the poultry farmers will get enough. Then even the importers will come in to buy whatever they want. But here's the case that we are not getting the maize. Mm. But the uh, foreigners come in to buy the maize at any price that you give them. That We cannot work with that price. Now, I mean, now, just... Um I think on Monday, uh, you know, you, you had um, La Bianca and Rockland meet coming together in a partnership for Rockland to produce poultry locally, which will be marketed by La Bianca. And during that program, what La Bianca decided to do, because they are funding Rockland, for instance, is to get into farming, the production of maize, because the great plan is to have 500,000 birds. Now, they've decided to get into the production of maize. Yes, the first time they tried it, the yield not all the best, but they say we are going to continue over the period until we get there. Isn't it more of paying attention to them saying, this is what I want to do, instead of saying well, somebody tried it, it didn't work so it's not going to work for a poultry farmer wanting to do this. What I'm trying to say is that you know the maize farming also comes with a big funding. We, the poultry farmers, we cannot afford that. Okay? La Bianca is trying to come out to the project. If you listen to her statement, he made it clear that the feed cost is too high. The quantities that La Bianca wants to produce or wants to collaborate with uh, Rockland to produce, he cannot produce that much maize for Rockland. We need other farmers to come in because the consumption of the uh, the feed, 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 feed uh, conversion is so high that you, you cannot get the maize quantity that you need. So definitely, we we have to concentrate on the on the on the uh, boil up the chicken production. That also comes out with money. The moment you try to divide your money, you use some for production, you use some for maizing. In the long run, you see that your, 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 your farm is, uh, is, is going down. Because poultry also involves a lot, of, a lot of money. It's millions of cities that you need to produce. So if you, if you take portion of the uh, the money to do maize farming, you might not get the result that you needed. It also needed attention. So in the case of La Bianca, what he said is that he's looking for a land. Maybe he has some experts who are going to do the maize production for her. But the quantities that uh, he's looking for in, in terms of the broiler, the maize that he will produce, it will not be enough to produce the chicken that uh, he's looking for. Definitely, other maize farmers should come in. So we, not, we have to apply the division of labor. We encourage the maize farmers, we equip them, we give them money to produce at a reasonable price for the poultry industry. Great. You know, Vincent, um, what, what I want us to do is to have some more understanding of the cost involved. You know, you've, we've talked about feed and all. Kujua uh, Kutubu has told us how much uh, a day old chick uh, is costing uh, 24 Ghana cities. When I was having conversations mm. uh, last week, I was told it was 21. I wouldn't be surprised it's 24 today. Mm. And so um, if you're buying 24 cities and on the average, the feeding, for instance, how much would it cost you to raise, say, a broiler? And how much would you sell it? Do you have to sell it in order to make your profit? Yes. It, it's, it's very difficult. That is why always the uh, consumers complain about our prices. Mm. The chick was five cities. The problem is that all our hatcheries in this country, they are not producing broilers because I remember there was a program in 2014, uh, broiler, the, the, the GAPROP 
Broiler Revitalization Program. Mm -hmm. One of our hatchery operators, he went in for 20,000 uh, breeders, broilers. And in the end, he has to sell them just like that. Mm -hmm. And it will interest you to know that one day or two for the breeder is about $6. So just imagine. So if you try to do everything right and the production is going down, the hatcheries will operate at their full capacity. In that case, the, the cost of the bed will come down. We can sell it at least less than 10 cities instead of importing it at 24 cities now. So these are some of the things that we should be looking at. We have to bring all the hatchet operators on, on, on a round table okay. and discuss with them. But they, 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 they must be also given assurance that whatever they produce, the poultry farmers will, will buy from them and raise them. Because if you, if you, are, if you, you bring out the day old chick and you are not able to sell, that is also a problem. Mm. Now, let's look at our production costs in Hatchery. Electricity alone is taking them about 30%. So if the hatchery operator is not uh, having a full capacity operation, that will also be another issue. But if, let's say, he has about 10,000 capacity and he's able to produce 10,000 at every stage, at least the price can come down. It's a matter of sitting down with the stakeholders and having a thorough discussion of all the value chain so that we can bring the cost of production down. In that case, you will not even need to ban the importation because when the prices get closer to the imports, definitely Ghanaians will choose the local system. Right. We started tracing our way down the value chain to figure out what the problem is. So we wanted to know why is it so expensive to produce uh, chicken in Ghana? turns out the big thing there is the feed, the cost of the feed. So why is it so expensive to produce the feed in Ghana? turns out, well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a seriously uh, capital-intensive project and not many farmers are able to produce the components of that feed. And uh, the main components here, uh, maize, soya bean, wheat bran, uh, and if you are going to be producing eggs, then you need calcium. Uh, and I think you mentioned one other thing, Kujo. Uh, some other micronutrients. Indeed. And then you, you need to vaccinate the birds. Yeah, vaccination um, is also important. The, the, the per certain shadows and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, when it comes to the feed, maize, soya bean, wheat, bran. Or that can be substituted rice for rice bran. bran we uh, can, we can also discovered. grow millets. Mm. So, what, so what is it that makes it difficult for the Ghanaian farmer to produce these materials since the demand is there why are no investors sending their money into this field so that farmers can grow what the industry needs why are banks shying away from lending money to people if, if at this point if someone walks into a bank and says i want to produce feed for poultry production why would a banker not grab that opportunity and lend money to such a farmer these are the questions we're asking. Uh, and we're trying to find solutions as well. So let's get back to it. And Kojo, I'll start with you because, I mean, we, it, during the break, I was raising these questions, right? Yeah. The demand is there. Why is the supply not living up to it? Why is economics not working okay. when it comes to this? I will use an example of a business arrangement we have. So I work with New Age Group, right? So we have New Age Agri Solutions. We have Chigaba, which is an outgrower. Um, company manages thousands of outgrowers and then there's Wicom which runs a crowdfunding scheme so we crowdfund make money support production and then we sell now there are a couple of poultry farms we work with these poultry farms fund some of our activities so now maize is selling for about 240 250 cities in Accra mm -hmm. but because they funded and have the price Bag. prices locked right they can get their maize for 190 200 So this farm is saving about 40 50 mm -hmm. So you are given examples of Labianca and whatever. So there's, there, there's, there's that 
to be said and and the poultry farm i'm talking about is a fifty thousand capacity poultry farm since they started they've always been consistently producing because there is consistent supply of of feed and they know they'll get it at a certain price which makes them profitable i was doing the maths on on poultry in ghana so we said that we import about once 180 000 tons right if we even want to reduce that import by 50 percent we have to farm 36 million beds 36 million beds right that'll be about 5.4 that'll require 5.4 million tons of of feed mm -hmm. and out of this 3.5 million tons will be maize 1.6 tons will be soya 108,000 tons will be rice bran mm -hmm. if you want to substitute that with uh, uh, wheat with, with rice mm -hmm. and then you can add all the other things so we need to think as a country and see the country as an ag agro-industrial enclave. We need to feed off every other industry to, 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 to thrive as, as, as a country. We import about, let's say, the highest fertilizer import you've ever brought into the country was about 600,000 tons, mm -hmm. right? Now, this poultry you are, you are farming generates waste, which waste you can process into organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You develop proper protocols to farm maize and soya with the organic fertilizer in some instances mixed with inorganic fertilizer to give you the yields and then you move mm. but we don't see any consistent thoughts that merges all these opportunities within the value chain now the average poultry farmer would go to a bank to seek for a loan and get a loan for say 30 percent let's use that as a hypothetical figure if i'm also a, a, the farmer going to the bank for a loan i'm also getting it for 30 percent so I take a loan at thirty percent, grow maize, come and sell to the farmer at two forty cities. He buys that as on the thirty percent and passes it on to you. But we could have arrangements where the farmer, the poultry farmer, and the maize farmer can team up, get the loan because the loan is doing one thing, producing the feed for them. Mm -hmm. That's it. So why must I take a loan? Farm. Then they take a loan to buy. So in the end, you are having to spread interest, compound the interest from the whole value chain mm. onto the consumer when we can limit it at the point of production. So if it's um, FNB Bank, APSA, ADB, Development Bank, you support these two actors to produce the feed. Mm -hmm. Now, if we need to produce 3.5 million tons of maize to even reduce our imports by 50%, what do you need? You need the land. That's when you get the state getting in because you know our land problems. To structure and give the industry some support. Mm. No industry grows on its own with just private actors. Mm. Look at inflation. Look at the dollar rate. I'm going to give you an example of something. So if I want to produce maize for Gideon's farm, I'm buying hybrid seeds. Most of these are imported. So if Ken's management of the economy is such that your exchange rate is always going up and your inflation is always going up, mm. your cost of hybrid seeds is up. We decide. We don't produce them here. I'm importing these. Yeah. Um, herbicides, insecticides, NPK, urea. We are bringing all these things in. So the macro economy must also be managed such that there is some consistency in exchange rates and pricing so that farmers can, can plan. Now, number two, there is a case to be made for commercial farms and the state to facilitate some of these things. The last time we were here and we were talking about rice, I said that we have enough water to feed West Africa. Even though Galamse is still messing us up, mm. if you look at the Volta Basin alone, there is a big capacity to use the Volta Basin in Upper East, Upper West, Northern, Savannah, um, Bono, East, Oti, and Volta region itself to be a hub for food production mm. so we need to invest and investing in irrigation and large scale farms doesn't come easy these are regular banks are also acting like trader banks they want quick money they want um lower risk business so they are not going into some of these things so it takes the state to also facilitate some of these things mm. but whilst we advocate for large scale farms we should also not forget that majority of Ghanaians depend on farming so if you are going to go fully mechanized you are going to remove a lot of people from em employment and from the work we've done 
if you give farmers the right input and the right technical support, they can get you the yields. Right. So average rice yield in Ghana is 3.5 tons, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Per hectare. We're able to hit 5.5, sometimes 6. Um, s- somebody said uh, maize is 1.5 ton. If you do it well, you can hit your 3, 3.5. Sometimes you can even go. So it's about the inputs and what goes in. What we've noticed is that, so people say that, oh, people start farms and they are not successful because you usually don't get all the funding and all the things you need to go. So mm. you don't go the full protocol. You may have some hybrid seeds, you not get the full input of fertilizer you need. If you get the full input of fertilizer you need, you may not get correct insecticides. You remember when army worms ravaged the whole country and the, and the state was hopeless because we didn't invest in some of those things. Yeah. So we need to sit down and look at what we must do. Look, Kojo, I always say this. For capacity to develop and, and grow what we need, we do have it. The, we, 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 we've, we've been made to believe that Smallholder farmers are not enough. They are part of the enough we need to grow. A hybrid system of commercial farms uh, with with smallholder farmers, poultry farms getting together. A lot of poultry farms have assets. If the banks want something, and you see, it's it's also crazy. If they want to use their assets as collateral, the banks don't want it because they cannot liquidate these these assets when something happens. So it always comes back to the states. So, for example, the development bank which the government has set up, which wants to fund these things. The bank must not do business as usual. They need to sit down, work with value chain actors, understand the need. If we are talking about feed for poultry, the only problem is let's get the input to produce the feed Mm -hmm. and transmit it into the industry. What do we need for the input? For me to grow one acre of maize, for example, I'll need about 3,000 cities to buy the correct input for the full protocol to get the yields we need for them. Who wants to fund that? Is it the states? Is it you? Is it the banks? Let's put all those things in. There is no issue. Some people say that, oh, if you do local production, where are we going to store them? We're asking about warehousing and all those things. Mm. We don't have a bigger issue to do with warehousing. Ask me why. The reason is that when you grow the maize today, the poultry are always eating. So it's not like you are growing 3.5 tons and you are storing 3.5 tons Mm. over a period of six months. The birds are eating. And we are doing two cycles. We do Mm. major season, minor season. The north, that's only the major season. With with, um, commercial farms, with irrigation, they can also do major season, minor season. So it's not like all the 3.5 tons are coming at a goal Mm. and we need storage for 3.5 million tons. When it comes to the finished product, where do we store the imported products? Are they not in warehouses and cold stores? Mm -hmm. If you are bringing 180,000 metric tons of poultry into the country every year, that poultry is stored within a certain cold chain. So the assumption is that there's a cold chain that can support local production of 180,000 metric tons. If we produce uh, feed, which is affordable enough for the poultry farms to produce poultry, which is affordable enough. Mm. If you have butcheries that are going to cut to standard and we do the packaging, we have storage. All the businessman who is importing the poultry into the country wants is that if I'm off taking from the country, I need to get good margins to make profits. Mm. So the people at Ministry of Trade, the people at Ministry of Finance, the people at Ministry of Agri should start asking themselves these questions. If I want to do 50% import substitution, how much land do I need to do this? Mm. Maybe I need a million um, acres. Mm. Where do I get that land? Otufo, Yana, um, Togbistri, Abomefia. All those people have lands, right? What arrangement can we put in place to take some of their lands to reward them? Mm. What has happened over the years is that when the state takes over people's lands, they hardly get any rewards for the loss they've incurred. Let's put in place so that every person along the value chain will earn something for the resource they are bringing in. I want to bring in Gideon here, and I'm curious about something. So the imported chicken is sometimes even 50% of the price of the locally produced one. So you local producers, who is buying your chicken? It's the same local people who buy the imported one. And they are Sadly, what pay. happens is that uh, it's not even in the supermarkets for people to buy. Uh, recently, I went to a supermarket and the chicken they have there was from Turkey. Yeah. From Turkey. <laughs> so from Turkey. Uh, like. what we are producing, in actual fact, is not sufficient. And from my estimation, if we are to do things right, within the next four years, we can be sufficient, self-sufficient in poultry production. 
but we need to get certain fundamentals right. Mm. Let's reactivate all the hatcheries. If we cannot get the, the breeder to produce the quality uh, uh, eggs for DO chicks, let's initially import the eggs. But within a time space, we should be able to decide, okay, now we should have our breeders in and they should be able to produce the, the quality eggs that we need for the hatcheries to produce. Mm. And when we get that right, because you see the whole meat industry or the poultry uh, uh, broiler meat industry, it's, it's just a cycle of 8 to 10 weeks. All right, then you turn around by eight weeks. If you are feeding your birds well and you are doing all the medication and vaccination well, and you do not have any outbreak, within eight weeks they are matured. They can be taken to the um, uh, where there will be the slaughterhouses and other things. And then you get them slaughter. You treat the place, and then the new birds are coming in. Mm -hmm. So in a space of one year, you you can do so much. But in the process of doing that, chickens are not like human beings that will fast. If a chicken fasts for a day, it's going to punish you for two weeks, either a layer or a broiler. So you need the feed and it must be available. Yeah. All right. And these are the things that we, we, should, we should work at. For maize, sometimes I do not understand why we are not able to produce enough maize to support our poultry industry because we've done it before it's not like this whole crisis befell us just some two weeks or three weeks ago in the 90s when we were in college most of us were thinking of how to join uh, maybe a farwa or in fumo or samoa yamua because these were the big guys in the industry and they weren't importing maize like we're doing now they were buying all the maize they were using in this country. And they were producing enough broilers to feed this country. Unfortunately, we seem to have lost all. But what I'm saying is that we can still do it. Reactivate the hatcheries. Get enough maize in storage, maize and soya in storage. If private sector cannot do it, the government can team up and we can get that done. Get these two things done. Let's get the veterinary also working so that if we are we should have any outbreak, it is identified quickly and resolved. And then let's get the whole system going. And within two, three, four years, we will be able to solve this meat issue that we are having for the importation of poultry. For now, let's say you don't touch it mm -hmm. because there is a big differential between the demand we need as a people to consume in a year and what we are importing. Mm. Let's deal with that shortfall first and then address the importation. And I believe that if we have more poultry meat on the market, automatically people can make the wise decision. Yeah. With imported uh, uh, poultry meat, you know, it's traded. These guys, they will trade it and retrade it and retrade <laughs> it and retrade it. So all the money has been made already. That thing sitting in the cold storage in America has no value. So if he gets a country that is prepared to take it, he will just push it on you at maybe 50 cents a kilo or something, and it goes. So these yeah. are the real issues that we need to address. Right. With the rest, I believe that locally we can manage it. But let's manage the feed. We have enough feed milling companies in this country that can produce as much as we need. But let's get the feed ingredients, which is the maize, the soya, and the wheat bran. And one other thing. None of the meals, the flour meals in this country, is managed by locals. So at the point, even the wheat bran, which used to be one of the cheapest ingredients in, in, in feed formulation, were being imported. And so all of a sudden, the whole thing escalated. And now wheat bran is selling at 85 cities for that <laughs> waste product, you know. Uh, so right. these uh, are these are some of the issues we, we really need to address. I'm and leaving, quickly we can get things going. I'm leaving the last word to you, Victor uh, Opomeje, uh, chairman of the Ghana National Association of Poultry Farmers. You have called on government to intervene. 
but I have, I have no doubt that this is not the first call that has been made on government to intervene. They haven't intervened. So what is plan B? If you can't rely on government, what is plan B to get this value chain uh, affordable so that we can buy locally produced chicken? Thank you very much. Let me make this correction. Uh, the impulse to the country is not 180,000 metric tons. It's about 700,000 metric tons. Ghana mm -hmm. Food and Agriculture Compact gave us a figure for 972,331 for meat imports, out of which 700,000 is from the poultry. Now, in 2021, EU alone brought 227,903 metric tons into the country. And from 2018 up to this time, Ghana has been the leading importer of chicken from EU. U.S. and Brazil, they are always, always struggling at the top. Now, if you give the same figure to U.S. and Brazil, 227,903 times 3 will give you 683,709 metric tons. In 2021, South Africa is not included, and other small, small ones are not included. So in the first place, the 180,000 metric tons that we've been talking of, EU alone brought more than that into the country. It's now over 700,000. So we should be working on this figure and see how the imports are being flooded or dumped into this country. Now, let's come to the substantive issue. If you look at uh, the feed, every, every bed, if you are giving four kilos, He's talking about life. a bed, a broiler, up to slaughtering a state, it means 250 bears are eating 6,500 data cities. Now, if one bed, one bed costs about 26 Ghana cities, I mean the fee, and if the bed is 24 cities, it means the feed and the bed alone is giving you 50 Ghana cities for a single bed. Other things are not included, like drugs, labor, and whatever. So it tells you how production cost for a broiler is now. Now, we are talking of 700,000 metric tons. If you want to produce just 10% of it, it gives you 70,000 metric tons. 70,000 metric tons, producing it in Ghana, will call for a lot of funding to do that. So my suggestion is that, well, for now, poultry farmers, they don't have the money because most of them are collapsed most of them are in court struggling or battling for their properties. Some have lost their lives because of the stress that is coming in. So the, uh, I, I, I will insist that at least the government should come out with a pragmatic approach to see how we can revitalize the whole poultry industry. We have to do it along the value chain players. The government should take it as a project because this is an industry that has the potential of creating over a million jobs. So we should give it much attention. If we want to leave it in the hands of the private sector alone, it will be very difficult because most businessmen don't want to venture into agriculture at all. But if we started from somewhere and it's able, we are able to build it up, then other businessmen will come in so that we move on. But if you want to lead it to only the private sector, 
I'm afraid it will be very difficult to uh, revamp the industry. And this is an industry that is contributing a lot to the GDP and other things. We should not allow such an industry to, to collapse. Mm. We've had a lot of stakeholder engagement we a, a, with, a, with the government. But mm. I will still say that uh, we will not leave it just like that. We will continue to talk about it until we, we, we get a pragmatic approach to revamp the poultry industry. Um, uh, it's important for us to state that, you know, even though you are quoting a different uh, figure of 700,000 metric tons of imports, uh, we are working with the Ministry of Agri figures. Uh, and that says that uh, we are in, well, our total demand is about 400,000 metric tons. And we are importing about 180,000 metric tons. That's what the Ministry of Agri is saying. We appreciate that you have another source. Uh, so we've we've heard you on that, but uh, we are working with the Ministry of Agri figures uh, to avoid doubt. I want to say a big thank you to our guest this morning, uh, Victor Pongeji. Uh, oh, actually, before we go, uh, Winston. Uh, yes, Kujo, before we go, you know, um, Gideon made a very important point. You know, there's been a conversation about whether we ban or not, and you know, we've talked about even our challenges with producing more. You made a very important point about the fact that you know many of these countries, uh, which import, I mean, export to Ghana. The real demand is the chicken breast. Mm -hmm. And so once they sell the chicken breast for a very high rate price, what is left is something they just ship to us because they don't really need the money. Mm -hmm. So if you want to say, for instance, oh, let's ban imports, but that kind of demand will not be able to meet the mm -hmm. demands. What it means is that we have to, as a people, decide today that within the next five years, we want to increase our production. You've been talking about it, Koto. If we meet that target, then we can start a conversation about the need to ban importation of these products. Yeah. Then we can get into the conversation now about even the health benefits of consuming locally produced chicken. Yeah. Because look, when it comes to rice, just to make the point I want, when it comes to rice, for instance, you know, because um, the local rice you know, takes very little water, uh, because it's very fresh, and we have this conversation all the time. I like it because I say, oh, I want my rice fresh. I walk to the poultry farm because I say, oh, I don't like any, like the Minister of Food and Agriculture, the uh, recently resigned one, who say, mortuary chicken. <laughs> but as it stands now, because our production capacity is so low, the question is, what can government do? How does government incentivize corporate Ghana to get into the production. What tax incentives can it even give these people who go in there to go and produce? It's not just saying, okay, once you're producing, we're giving you tax incentives on the poultry. Even your main business, by deciding, for instance, that you want to go into poultry production, we can say, we're going to reduce your CIT by this margin because you're going into it. A lot of thinking would have to go on. Look. Land is a major problem for all of us in this part of our world. What land can government take and use it, for instance, in the cultivation of maize? The last time we did a program about, uh, you know, soybean, the fact that we said we banned um, uh, importation, I mean, the exportation of soy soya, for instance. Unfortunately, people come into this country, buy it, take it away, and our farmers would have to resource to importing the very thing with US dollars and creating problems for them. Yeah. How do we ensure? So now we said we set up a committee, the committee was supposed to look at that, that committee doesn't really seem to be functioning. A lot of things would have to be done. And I still insist that, look, farmers, as you have talked about, can go into certain schemes, not just one farmer, uh, as in one poultry farmer. Yeah. You can say, we're going into an agreement as a group of poultry farmers, we're helping you to cultivate. You monitor them. Don't just say that I've gave you money and that's the end of it because look, at the end of it all, if we send an agreement for 190 Ghana cities and there's an opportunity to sell at 245 Ghana cities, I would explore the opportunity to, of selling at 245 Ghana cities. Unfortunately, we are a dishonest society. So you monitor and supervise to ensure that, yes, this is how much I gave you to cult, I mean, contribute to your farms. This is how much you promised you were going to cultivate. I am monitoring and this is what you have produced and let's settle it. At the end of it all, I think that 
we can go a long way. But um, having said all of this, there's a lot of demand. Uh, corporate Ghana, the ball is in your court. Yes, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that the Poultry Farmers Association, um, they need to start talking and working together. I gave you an example. Um, let me mention the names of the farms. We work with Rosan's Farms, which has a capacity of about 50,000. Uh, we work with uh, Rans Boat Farms and some other farms. If you collaborate with feed producers, they can get you the raw material and then you use it to work. Um, this year in April, we are launching uh, one of our projects that continues to sponsor um, 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 farmers and support poultry farmers. So if you're a poultry farmer and you need feed, you are doing your annual planning for the year. You know that you need, say, 50,000 tons of this, 20,000 tons of that. So let's talk. Reach out to us. We can, we can grow your maize and your, your soya. We can help you get rice bran. I am on a campaign to eliminate wheat bran as, a key, as the key bran in the system. Because, look, if we grow the rice industry, rice bran becomes a waste product, which goes into feeding poultry. There is an opportunity to, to, to use millets as a substitute in some of the things you do. So if you run a poultry farm, uh, reach out to us, New Age Agric Solutions. Just Google. You can find us. We can have a conversation and we'll see how we can, right. we can help you get maize and soya. But most importantly, the state must use the systems in place to ensure that we create the environment to meet our needs. Over, Look, I'm just 36 years old. From social studies in primary school to SS, our concentration has been Ghana producing gold, timber, bauxite, whatever for exports. But we have needs within the country we've not met. We need to allocate our resources to meet those needs. Because if you net off the foreign exchange gain and 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 the, and 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 the, and 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 the needs we have and the import we are bringing in, you always realize that we are losing. Whatever we are producing for the Western market is coming back to us more expensive. And with the advancement of technology, a lot of the value addition can be done locally. So let's, as a country, look at meeting our needs. We meet our needs first. If there are surpluses, like these people eat their chicken breast and bring us a coconut for soup, mm. let's meet our needs and give the surpluses out. Right. Yeah, so um, my final words is that um, the poultry industry is a big industry. It has a lot of um, operatives within the value chain. Uh, it can solve most of our unemployment issues if we do it right. And so let's not go doing something new. Let's look at um, reactivating most of the... Um, systems that we have already uh, hatcheries uh, feed mill feed milling and all the other things that we need to really make the industry successful and like i said within four years we should be able to solve this problem the zimbabwean have done it now they are self-sufficient in most of the grains and they are they are now producing their own fertilizer to, yeah. to feed their systems, mm. you know. And they looked at the problems holistically. So how much land do we need? How much fertilizer do we need? How much land do we need to put under irrigation? And how they tackled labor? them strategically. Oh. And boom. Zimbabwe. 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 Oh. Just three, four years ago, we were laughing at them that you carry a, 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 a whole barrel load of uh, cash to, to buy, buy just a, a loaf of bread. Today, they are self-sufficient in wheat, mm. in grains, in soya. Do you know, uh, I, I said at the beginning of the show that even if you are a vegetarian, this conversation affects you. Let me read a message Kwame Sapuansiri just sent. He says, you guys are making me sad. We can't produce enough chicken for our consumption. We can't produce enough beef. Now, thanks to Galamse, our freshwater fish stock is declining and must be farmed. We are not planning for this too. We are already importing fish as a result. Are we seriously thinking about decreasing the pressure on the city? Ah, what is wrong with us?